much crossover. Don't Germans hate Russians? I mean, uh, you know, it's a, it's a tough call. I don't know. I don't know for because they're getting all their they get all their fuel. They get all their heating oil from the Russians. So what about this uh, Nazi that uh, just shot up all these folks in uh, in Texas? Are you are you are up, you are you right in on this? <laughs> you mean the you mean the uh, cartel Mexican who shot up? <laughs> Got kicked out of the army. Yeah, was a security guard, armed security. They say level three, whatever that is, right? But he had been off the job for three years. Walks in. Apparently, he has looked at. Uh, he, he has uh, surveilled this place for a couple weeks. I guess finds peak time. It's it's mostly richer, upper middle class soccer mom kind of people. Walks in immediately, goes to guns, dumps one dude, proceeds in, and somebody. Um, got contact with him and he had shot, I think put bullets in seven people, eight people. And then they, he, they, somebody killed him. Um, but all the media is out and they're like right wing, uh, supremacist, white supremacist. He's Mexican. His parents are so Mexican that they need a translator to even speak with an English person who he's living with current was currently living with. And now all they've, they found somebody, some, left-wing uh, media group found his fi- social media and he had a couple of other Facebook pages set up supposedly and they've got him in like Hitler youth shit and all kinds of like fucking he's got he's got two fucking big ass s like big SS's on him and the pages that he has interacted with have no followers no friends it's yeah, literally it's, like these pages were just fabricated they were fabricated yeah it, d- okay you want to go? You want to go super crazy? Super crazy. Okay. Before this happened, Alex Jones did a show about staying out of malls. That the Biden administration, again, Alex Jones, gay frogs. So who knows? That you the, know the, the, the I know the gay frog frogs was real. real. I know. I know. How about the Simpsons? Was it on the Simpsons? Have you <laughs> I, seen all I the Simpsons shit? Yeah, I haven't seen it on the Simpsons. But Alex Jones said that uh, from a credible source, stay out of malls close to uh, close to the border. That the Biden administration has done a deal with the cartels to create violence on this side of the to create gun violence on this side of the border to blame it on other entities. How close was this mall to the border? We're fucking right there. <laughs> it is? I mean, it's not right on the border. Because I thought it's still, near Dallas-Fort Worth. It's still, that's that's actually still within the, uh, with the within the, what do you call it, the inclusion zone for Border Patrol? So how close is that? Is that like San Diego to Tijuana kind of close? Mm, like, because at, at, mom, at sure. mom's house, right, we were 30 minutes to the border. Yeah. He's close. They were close. What episode is this? 26. 26? Pulling the Thread Podcast, episode 26. What's going on this week? Mm, not much. Do you remember the very first time you were ever shot at? Yes. How old were you? Oh, well, out of anger... No, it wasn't even anger the first time I shot it. How the so fuck? I was probably... Uh, <laughs> Who's shooting at you not out of anger? I was probably... I'm trying to think how old I was when that kid almost shot me with the 22. Um, I couldn't have been more than... It couldn't have been more than 14. But not out of anger? No, it wasn't out of anger. It was... Uh, it was... It was classic gun... It was classic gun shenanigans. He had a um, he had a twenty two. He had a twenty two that was loaded, but not loaded. So magazine was in it, and it was hanging on the wall. I think it was his dad's actually. And we went in the room, and he was like, "How cool is this?" And I'm like, "Yeah, that's cool. I want one." And he's like, "Yeah, this is cool." And he's like, "Rack the action," and then like I'm. I'm like right there, and he went to he went to put it back on the wall, and he squeezed the trigger, and just right by me. I remember shooting from upstairs into the fireplace at mom's house. Okay, but I didn't take into account that there's offset between the optics. 
like when you're shooting wait a, a minute, little bit wait of a, a car. Okay. Were you do, you were doing it on purpose, weren't you? You set up phone books and you were going to shoot the phone books. No, I was just okay. shooting into the fireplace. It's concrete. Again, so on purpose. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Continue. So there's three there's three holes mm-hmm. in the fireplace screen, right? It's this frame and it's, you know, sheet metal down here black. And then it's got one, two, three holes that are clearly bullet holes. And I'm like, I'm fucking, I'm fried, right? I'm, I'm going to get my ass beat. Mom never, ever to that, like ever said anything about it. I think that we just never lit a fire and she just never paid attention to it. It was like that for fucking, I'd go, I'd go back home as an adult. Why didn't you? There were still holes there. Why didn't you pasty up? Why didn't you? I don't know. I just didn't, (laughs) I just like after, after not getting in trouble for weeks, you know, I just fucking forgot all about it. But in the, so the fireplace, we had had fires as a child, right? Right, I was, I was probably, I don't know, 16, 17, probably when this hat, when I did this. So if you look in the fireplace, there's brand new cinder block and everything else is black, right? You could see the, the bullet holes where they, they didn't penetrate even the first layer. Um, but yeah, I remember that I had, we had all kinds of shit. Mom came home and I'd made this thing that quiets your stuff down. Can we even, I guess that's There's no statute of limitations on that shit. I don't know. I mean, I was a child and I'm 50 now. I don't, I don't know. I mean, okay. So I'd made as a child, I made this thing that quieted things down. Right. And all you heard on a 1022 was for about 10 rounds. Right. So I took it and had the same one. They were like one liter um, uh-huh. Mountain Dew bottles uh, yeah. with SOS pads and a lot of duct tape. So I put it on an HK91. <laughs> How'd that work out? It didn't. So I'm on mom's balcony and I'm going to shoot safely right down into the yard. That would be safe because we, the houses were kind of tiered, right? So, I mean, we had some semblance of safety, gun safety. Um, I'd never had any gun safety classes or education or anything. You know, we were just out. We'd go out in the f- middle of nowhere um, and shoot. You know, you'd have to drive 90 minutes up to Julian or wherever. Right. Um, so I shot this HK91, but it was much louder. It did not actually uh, quiet anything down. It actually amplified the sound greatly, and it overpressurized and popped that thing. And uh, there was a strafing run in the yard, right? So I'm out there like, oh, shit. Like, so I'm out there mowing and trying to kick all the stuff back in. Mom never saw it. <laughs> we had one we would take uh, we would take paint cans and shoot them. Uh, we'd build a fire of paper around it, you know, newspaper. Light the fire and then shoot it with a, with a BB gun or a twenty two, And it would it'd catch and you'd have this flame, right? right? And normally it would just kind of fall over and the flame would go up. Well, you could see the flame from the front yard, right, over the house, because that garage part there was just one story. But it fell down, and the grass was all, like, dead, so it caught the grass on fire. So I'm out there mowing the grass and uh, turned the sprinklers on, put the fire out, and I'm mowing the grass. with It's all wet, and Mom came home. She never saw that either, luckily. <laughs> so first time you had, did you ever get shot at out of anger within the United States? Trying to think. It's been so long. No. Uh uh-uh. uh. Did you get to shoot? I got shot at in the United States, not angry, with from an M sixty machine gun. How'd that happen? Uh they didn't shift the base of fire, maneuver element. And so we walked right into the So in the Marine Corps? Mm-hmm. And yeah, we walked right into it. Anybody get shot? Uh staff sergeant got my my platoon sergeant got a uh my platoon sergeant got a piece of jacket. Basically, what happened? We walked in. We we were maneuver element, and we were we were below the we were kind of below the line of fire, um, and we were the maneuver element, and we were maneuvering. This is up in Twenty Nine Palms, and so we walked into the beaten zone, and I got hit by a rock in the back of the leg. Um, or my platoon sergeant, I believe it was staff sergeant. Hmm. It wasn't Weston. I can't remember his name. He was a former uh, force recon guy. He got jacket in the back of his leg, and then he's like, "Oh shit!" Base of it was a night. We were it was nighttime and shit, and so we're we're we were in the goddamn beaten zone. So 
So there's tracer, we moved tracers running. Tracers, everything's going. Do you see tracers? You don't see tracers when they're coming at you. Yeah, you see tracers when they're coming at you. You do? Yeah. I mean, not when they're coming right at you, but yeah. So if I said this sentence, which would be correct, I got to fire my rifle or I had to fire my rifle when shooting at people? When I would say it? Yes. If I said it, I would say I got to fire my rifle. That's how I feel too. That's what I. That's what I would think too. If you're, if if you're but kids in, coming up nowadays, like young, first first, yeah. you know, what is it? Term in the Marine Corps, you do yeah. your four years. Is it they even four? Hey. It's eight now. No, it's, I think it's still four. So your first, uh, you know, years in the Marine Corps, or whatever, and you go into combat. I feel like a lot of kids would be like, I had to fire my rifle. How many people are going in the military because they want to be warriors? Hmm. I mean, it's, it's probably a lot lower now. Uh, but again, you know, it's like the military is like combat arms. Okay. I don't know what you guys do in the logistical side of the house. Probably play a lot of checkers or whatever, but in the infantry. What is combat arms? So your, your artillery guys, your okay. tanks, okay. your, you know, people who are actually firing weapons in anger or, I mean, uh, Artillery guys and tanks, well, maybe tanks. Tanks might fire them in anger, but um, people who are actually firing to kill the enemy. But right? most of the time can't even see your enemy. Um, it's, it's, like, it's like training for, it's like training for the, the Super Bowl. So you, you spend, you know, some, some guys, you know, I, I feel sorry for the guys who got out right before the Gulf War or whatever because you spend 10 years, 20 years of your career training to to go to the big game and you never go to the game so i don't know if too many combat arm guys would not say i you know would not be i know it's going to sound ridiculous but happy to be able to go to the game how many uh what was the very first iraq conflict that was the gulf war right the first uh, the very first shield yeah uh desert shield desert storm desert shield that was like in the 90s yeah, that was 90-something uh, or other to was, liberate Kuwait. Was there any combat? Yes. Oh, yeah. There was, really? there was, there was some serious. But there no was, U.S. servicemen, KIA, nobody killed in action other than an aircraft that went down. Is that correct? I don't know if that's correct. I do believe we had some. Uh, okay. So it depends on what you mean. Uh, again, I, I am almost positive that in the first Gulf War there were some people or some uh, soldiers or Marines that were killed in contact with the enemy. Um, on but, our side? What do you mean? On our, our troops were killed? Yeah, that some of our troops were killed in contact with the enemy. The enemy. Very, it would have to, the number is, would be really small. Um, we had, unfortunately, uh, unfortunately, you know, it is the, it is the product of uh, warfare. We had a lot, we had a lot killed by friendly fire. Um, you know, the, the interesting thing, interesting thing that most people don't know is for the, for the push to go into, to go, to retake Kuwait, um, the unit with the highest casualties, the unit with the highest casualty was first battalion, ninth Marines and first battalion, ninth Marines was not there. We were still in transition to get there. To to basically, Colonel Pratt at the time believed that believed that the Iraqis were going to put up a much better fight, and that um, there was going to be casualties, and that we would come in and save the day. That's that's what he thought. Um, oh, that was our battalion commander. But one five shipped out immediately, but they were under TO. So we had just got back from a Westpac, so we were slated for a downtime. And so they took volunteers. Um, they took volunteers, like, I don't know, probably. It was a lot. A lot of guys jumped ship from the battalion and went to 1-5. When they got to 1-5 and got over in the desert, they took the 1-9 guys and they put them in uh, LAVs. And unfortunately, um, the Air Force took out two LAVs with one nine Marines in it and 
Hence, we had the highest casualty rate in Iraq, and we weren't even there or in the in the first Gulf War. Do we not have IFF stuff on there? Not at that time. Not not uh, <clears throat> not not in the first Gulf War. There was no there was no friend or foe. It was basically. Um, we, at that point in time, we were still doing recognition on all vehicles solely based off eye and memory. So you were still, you were still getting issued cards with these are the bad guys, these are the good guys, and uh, and that's what that was a a tragedy, but it happened. Was there any? Did did you guys shoot any um, during the riots? Um. Well, we were with we got a t- so again one nine. Snipers got attached to, I'm going to mess this up. I want to say it was three, four, one, four, maybe? One, four, one, four. It's so long ago. Uh, we got attached to the battalion that got assigned to go up there. And uh, they did hose a dude down with a saw, um, killed him. Wasn't yeah. that when the cops are like, cover me or whatever? Oh, that, <laughs> what, that we didn't shoot anybody when the cops were doing that stuff. But uh, basically... There weren't, they didn't really give us any rules. So, like. Did they give you bullets? They didn't give us, they didn't give us ammo. So, when we, when we uh, went with 1-5, or 1-4, I believe it was 1-4. Um, we were kind of like, you know, that's a sniper platoon from another battalion. They They kind of talked to us and made sure we had food and shit, but they didn't. They didn't really interact with us until they, until they freaked out about how many guns we had. But we came loaded. So, like, you know, it was the big thing on the news that fucking L.A. was getting burned down. So I had 7.62, I had 5.56, I had 9, everybody did. So we were all loaded. And 40 Mike Mike. No 40 Mike Mike. Um, <laughs> we were all loaded and nobody ever really like there was never there was never like a sit down rules of engagement this is what you can do this is what you can't do blah 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 or this is when you can be loaded so when they put when they put us on the street when they put uh, one nine scout snipers on the street we were already cocked and locked and you know we were ready to go it, it, at no time were we walking around with uh, unloaded guns and so uh, I believe it was Kilo Company from one four. They had a roadblock set up, and we'd been there uh, probably. Didn't the, a wasn't the weeks. National Guard there prior? The, yeah, the National Guard and was. They, a, they got interviewed or whatever, and they didn't even have like magazines or anything. Well, they got interviewed, and one of the National Guard guys was like, and it's what got us activated. So we had gone up to Tustin, and we're in Tustin, and just sitting in Tustin in the fucking. Remember the, the big boop, boop limp yeah, hangers? It wasn't yeah. 19th out of there. Yeah, uh, yeah, in that area. Yeah. And so. So we were just sitting there, and then they did an interview with a, just a, you know, a poor, I'm, I'm sure he was some special, you know, poor specialist in the Army National Guard, and they're interviewing him, and the and it's they're in front of a Kmart, and the people are just going in and taking stuff out. Right. They're just walking walking right past him, and the, the, the reporter's like, hey. Why don't you stop um, them? What's up? And he's like, we don't even have bullets. And so, like, that went. Everywhere, fucking National Guard, yeah, everything. National Guard doesn't have bullets, and so that green lighted. They're like, get the fucking Marine Corps up here right now, because, I mean, even if the governor at that did, time did that changed the dynamics on the ground for the criminal element. Oh, it it ramped up the it ramped up the theft because you immediately know that that guy is just standing there with a did fucking you have, club. Um, did was there like assassinations going on since we knew there was fucking no no law enforcement coming in? Did that just let criminal do whatever criminal does? Okay, so when when the when that happened, when L.A. blew up, the Bloods and the Crips um, basically shook hands. Ceasefire. Ceasefire. We're going to steal as much shit as we possibly can because they were making millions. They were they were making millions off of all the shit they were stealing, all the gun stores they were breaking into. Blah. blah. So there wasn't a lot of there wasn't a lot of. Uh, I mean, I don't know. I didn't work at the coroner's office in L.A. at the time, but there it didn't seem like there was a lot of gang-on-gang gang crime. Like, people were fighting over what they were stealing. They were just like, there's enough Nikes in here for everybody. Um, and so they put us on the ground, and then it was basically Marines on every single corner. And 
Kilo Company had a checkpoint. We were there for a couple for a little bit, and then a guy in a um, Z28, yeah, I don't know, broke through the checkpoint, like ran the checkpoint. Now, because of what the gunny told us later, I knew that one four was walking around with unloaded guns because the vehicle broke through the checkpoint and then he turned around and came back. So what that means what is, is what is breaking through the check? Just smashing like? through the, just smashing through the barrier to get to the other side. Like what's the barrier? It's just stupid. Those stupid, uh, like wood things that you would see, like Got in front it, of okay. train just track. Nothing, no, yeah, kind yeah, of saw thing. horse, nothing serious, nothing okay. serious. And then, you know, there were, Humvees parked, five tons parked. So with like with like M twos or with everybody there, you but, know, but standing no around. No bullets. Well, I'm sure they all had ammo, but nobody was loaded, and nobody okay. wanted to be the guy to fire. And so that vehicle went through, but then, like a genius, I, I'm a, I'm I'm pretty sure this was suicide by cop, maybe because like a genius, he broke through, got through the other side, and then he turned around and came back, and then they stitched him up with a saw, and killed him. And uh, because of because of posse comitatus and the fact that it it's technically illegal to use federal troops against local citizens, in the paper they said the National Guard had killed the guy, um, but it was actually one four that did it. Um, I mean, we had we got we got scouted. Our our post got we got scouted by uh, we got scouted by, I believe they were. Who's blue? Crips or blood? Bloods? Crips. 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 Yeah, we got scouted by Crips. Um, the Crips. I, I'll tell you this: the 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 black gangs, the Crips. And we had to have been in their area. We were in uh, uh, Firestone and Alameda is where we were at, which was right across the street from uh, the uh, projects. Uh, the Crips checked us out. The Mexican gangs check this out. Now, the Mexican gang, the interesting thing is the Crips were, the Crips were, I would think, serious soldiers, right? Probing and yeah, they were serious soldiers. They were, they, they, those guys knew their job. Um, the Mexican gang guys that came by, they were fun. Like, they would just be, they would just, they want to know what kind of machine gun that is. They, they were fun. I mean. It's like little droopy from yeah, Friday. Yeah, they were, they were just, uh. They were fun, but the Crips, when the Crips rolled through the checkpoint, they were assessing everything that was going on. What that's when, uh, that's when my when Warden almost like it would have been bad, but he was he was on point. So it was Kirk, not Warden. Uh, we had uh, so at, at at night the street would get closed. So the streets were closed from sunset to sunrise, and it was our job to sit on that on that corner and keep keep people from going in. Basically. There was a Weatherby gun store in the town, the oh, yeah. okay. next town over, yeah. and it was our job to keep them from hitting that Weatherby gun store. There's a there's a Weatherby gun store in uh, Atlanta by the hotel we use there, too. Yeah. And so uh, we would sit on that street corner and then, uh, and just nobody, once, once the Marine, once we... It's fucking weird that there'd be a Weatherby gun store there. Well, like, it's, those are it's very in expensive. A, yeah, but it's in a... So where we were at, that Firestone and Alameda was actually a dividing line. So on one side of the street, it was Compton. It was the projects. On the other side of the streets, it was a very, I would say, upper middle class Mexican neighborhood. So like, it was upper middle class. Uh, when like they, they came when they put that store there. It probably was. Yeah, it probably wasn't. But that's it was what, something that, different. That's what we were there for. Is that. Uh, that that gun store and then, and uh, did you meet anybody from the gun store? I never met anybody from the gun store. Were they were their personnel there at the time? Kind of like I, I don't know. We never weird. went. We never went down there. Okay, it was just the you know the police would come and they would be like, hey, they're so thankful you're here, and then they would come and they would have a squad car full of McDonald's and they'd be like, the McDonald's is so thankful you're here, and all kinds of shit like that. But we had these uh, these bloods come through, and they were in a. A lowered Impala, and there was four of them, two in the front seat, two in the front, and two in the back. Uh, they were all they were all wearing their colors, but they were coming through at sundown. So they were coming out of the area that we were keeping them out of, and it was right at sundown. So we were getting ready to close up. It was me, Kirk, Warden, uh, 
Kirk and Warden are the most redneck people on the face of the planet. Uh, Warden had had not ridden a bike until he was like twenty five. These are the guys that got caught skinning the possum, Scossum, or the coyote, yeah, or yeah. whatever these, in, the, these, in the barracks. <laughs> these are the redneckest guys you'll ever meet, um, and then me. And uh, are you redneck? No, no, no. I'm not redneck. What would you consider yourself? I'm uh, back then. I'm spoiled suburban. Okay, spoiled suburban. Suburban I, life. Yeah, I lived a good, great life in the suburban neighborhood. Thank you, mom. She did a great job. Um, do you wish you had lived more rural or more country? I don't, I don't think so. I, I wish that, I wish that when, uh, my gunny told me to buy property, yep. that I, as a, as a younger man, I wish I'd have been like, hmm, okay, I'm going to buy some property in Tennessee or wherever. My grandparents who were not wealthy, right? Um, my grandmother's grandma came here on a wagon, right? Like from Arkansas. Yeah. My grandparents, who lived in Kearney Mesa, owned property in Mission Valley. And oh, when God. they sold yeah. when yeah. they sold the property in Mission Valley, mm-hmm. I think they sold it and got like twenty thousand dollars, which was a lot at the time. But that's like twenty million dollars yeah. an acre oh, easy. now. I mean easy. fucking crazy. Easy, yeah. <laughs> and so it's the three of us on this corner. Uh basically Kirk and Warden are running the corner and I'm just you know, the fucking sergeant in charge or the corporal in charge. And, uh, the car rolls up and you can make a left-hand turn there. So he comes all the way up to the curb, like way too close to the curb. And, you know, they're all in the car. They're all looking forward. Is it booming? Boom. No, no, no music. No music. All looking straight forward. Even the driver, he's looking straight forward and they come up to the curb. And so, Kirk, he's got a M sixteen A two at the time. He moves closer to where the door is, and he's got his rifle down. And as he's doing that, Warden is creeping around the back of the car, and Warden's got his rifle. And you know, I have a an M sixteen with a two hundred three. I got the M forty. I got a nine millimeter, and I'm kind of like, I see the car, right? I see the car, but I'm kind of like, huh, this is uh, fuck. Are the safeties Uh, off? uh, No, no safeties are off. I'm kind of just, you know, living the dream out there. And uh, it stops. The car stops short of making making the turn. And so Ward, or Kirk, is he's moving to the door. (laughs) And the dude, like, he hits the window. He's lowering his window. Like this, looking straight forward. He's looking straight forward. And that... And that, as the window is coming down, as the window is coming down, Kirk is bringing his rifle up. I'm, I'm in a, I'm, I can still see this in slow motion as it happened that day. He's bringing his rifle About up. to get loud. He's taking his safety off, and I'm like, oh. <laughs> He's taking his safety off, and he is like, that muzzle is about to poke that dude right in the ear. And the dude. Does the again, dude know he's there? Oh, yeah. Yeah, he knows he's there. The dude goes. Now, while this is happening, Warden is cutting the pie on the back seat, right? He's cutting the pie. He's bringing his rifle up. Um, The dude in the driver's seat goes, boom, like this real quick with his hand. And Kirk is like, like I I can hear. I can, I know you probably don't believe this. I can hear the slack in the trigger going, coming out of that fucking trigger. And then he starts smiling. He puts his rifle on safe, and he pulls it back down. Warden's looking at him. I'm looking at him, and he's, and he laughs. He chuckles a little bit, and he's like, "Go ahead." And they drive off. I'm like, "What the fuck just happened, Kirk?" Um, I thought we were about to smoke those four dudes, or I thought you guys were about to, because I, <laughs> I'd have been, pull, I'd have been pulling on my pistol and shit and trying to get the sling you're, you're, off. You yeah. had a Bianchi with the yeah. flap back Yeah, then, with the flap. Oh yeah. I'd have been pulling on it. Thing. Shit, I'd be, it'd have been, it'd have been a mess. Um, and he's like, he, he, Kirk is just like, yeah, they was, they was just testing us. And I'm like, how do you know? I go, what did he show you? He had a fucking saltine cracker in his hand. Flashed a saltine cracker at him. <laughs> like, those guys almost completely got smoked over a fucking saltine cracker. But I, I am sh- I am 100% sure they were just sent to see what we would do. 
What do you think their move was? Like, what was, what were they after? Uh, uh, tactical information. But they why? Were, I mean, what what did they want? Where you guys were? They wanted your equipment, your guns. No, no, no. They didn't want anything from us. They wanted. I, they were looking for tactical information to see if that roadblock could be blasted. So, if, could they could they move through that roadblock and get no response from us? That's what they were looking for. They were looking for the tactical information to see if they could if they could move through there and then not get anything from us and. So those definitely weren't the shot callers. No, they weren't the shot callers. They were. They imagine, were, imagine when you got fucking voluntold to <laughs> fucking run up there and do that mission. Yeah, I mean, I, it. I mean, they handled it like tr- they handled it like super troopers, man. Because they even even when even when it was like for sure that I I knew Kirk was just going to start blasting those dudes in the front seat, they just kept looking forward and didn't do anything. So, had had Kurt ever fucking shot any dudes prior to that? Outside of maybe what he did before he joined the Marine Corps, maybe, <laughs> but not but, when, when the judge is like you, you're going in the Marine Corps. But this was a this was the this this one nine Scout Sniper Platoon was a very was a peacetime Scout Sniper Platoon. Okay, uh, so nobody there was nobody with any kills under their belt, uh, and uh, and so that I mean that was that was the that was the closest we got to craziness, uh, but what it did was. The minute the Marines took all the minute the Marines took all the fucking street corners, it re- it relieved the sheriff's department of having to patrol and maintain, and so because they weren't patrolling and maintaining anymore, they basically L.A. County and L.A. Sheriff's Department Cleaned they up. they put out all their their high risk warrants, and they're like we're we're getting all these motherfuckers, and they were rolling twenty four seven just snatching dudes off the street so much so that the bloods and crips actually came out on tv like a week later and we're like hey man the riot's over stop stop what you're doing like it, it you could say that the marine you could say that the marine corps presence is what uh what got the riot to stop but it was the bloods and crips losing their guys that really got them to go out like they were and i'm, I'm sure most people don't know this the Bloods and Crips, once once the sheriffs and police departments were just pulling dudes off the street, getting all their getting all the warrant guys, all the high risk warrant guys off the street, it was the Bloods and Crips that were going around and hitting Timmy in the back of the head and saying, put them motherfucking shoes back. Because they needed to get their guys back on the street because they were losing money. Once once the cops had free reign to do what to do their real job, they just were losing they were losing too much money. And so they're like, riot is over. And like the day they came, like they they did it on, uh, I can't think of KVS five or whatever the big TV station that used to be in Los Angeles. They came out on that television show on that TV show in front of reporters where a blood and a crip are like shaking hands and like I remember peace yeah we're forever, calling baby. the truth yeah peace forever because they were just lo- the because co- the cops were you know again so the cops can do, do their think, real job why do you think the cops can't just do their real fucking job on a normal day uh, because there's too much there's too many. Uh, because people there's, aren't locked down and hidden in their houses. There's yeah, just too well, much there's, collateral damage. There's, no, there's just too many. I don't want to call them Karen calls because they're not Karen calls, but they're on a on a daily basis. There's too many are calls they not, for are they not Karen calls though. Well, I mean, like, how many? Like, think about this, John. How many car accidents do you think happen in Los Angeles County on a daily given basis? Okay. Every every car accident requires a fucking cruiser to show up. Uh, you know. But don't they have a, a jump out crew or like VCTF violent time violent crimes task force? They do, or? but it becomes it becomes so much easier when you can bring everybody, right? It's just so much easier when you can bring everybody. Got it. And when you when it's just uh you know, one guy. And again, there was a twenty four hour curfew. That's what or, or I'm not, not, not yeah. I'm sorry, not a twenty four hour curfew. It was a sun up to sundown yeah. curfew. And because the curfew, there was a pretty good chance that John was going to be home or, you know, got it. Randall was going to be home. So they were, they were, they were very successful in what they were doing. Uh, you ever had warrants? Me? Yeah. Task force ever come after you? No, no way. That guy's so squeaky clean. Really? Look at him. Yeah. Look at him. Never. Like it didn't even surprise you when they came in. Hmm. I've had a speeding ticket. You've had a boring life. So you don't want task force to come after you. 
that doesn't like what even is task force anymore? There's there's a task force everywhere now. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Fucking, I have a task force. That's true. Um, uh, so the did you meet any of the Korean guys? How far were you from that? Different neighborhood. Different neighborhood. So when the Korean dudes were smoking fools, that was in the beginning, right? There's a gun shop. Yeah, right off the. That was right off the bat. Standalone, or was it connected with other buildings? It was a. It was actually one of those. Um, it was actually one of those like U shaped, um, you know, U shaped malls where there's like a massage parlor, a fucking food place, and so they they were they were very centrally located, so it made it very easy for them to defend that area. So much so that like LAPD wouldn't even go in there. Did LAPD did they ever try to prosecute those dudes? No, hell no. Did those Korean guys smoke any? They shoot anyone? Uh, I do believe initially. Uh, I do believe initially that. Uh, Two individuals were shot and killed, and one Korean was wounded. Those individuals, yes, gang gang members. I probably, don't. I, or, I don't. I mean, I don't know. Somebody trying to steal the guns? No, somebody just trying to steal shit. Somebody. Started trying, I mean, again, there's a. And they just plug some dude with a Nike box. Uh, no, um, uh, I believe that the the owner came out. I believe the owner. Uh, came out with a nine millimeter pistol with a Beretta. I believe this is go ahead and do your own research. I believe he came out with a Beretta and the people who were doing the stealing fired at him. He fired back. Somebody else shot and killed. I mean, I think once the guns came out, I mean, I think the Koreans were just walking around with guns. Um, Once the guns came out, everybody just started shooting. And so you, you had a lot of people, they got, you know, when we think about gangs, you know, we think about the gangs and we're talking about like the rioting and stealing Nikes and shit. Were gangs involved in that? Yes. Gangs were specifically targeting specific places. Most and was just targets but, of opportunity. But most of it was Mob. opportunity. Was just, was Mob just, a, yeah. you know, Bill from the corner gas station was like, hey, you know, this would be a good time for me to get a widescreen TV from Kmart. It, most of it was opportunity. Same now, thing you see happening right now all over yeah. the United States. Opportunity only happens if you let it. So that that same mob or orchestrate it. Yeah, that but that same mob that is in Target or wherever Kmart, ripping off all the fucking uh, I don't know what you would steal from there socks. They're only doing it because there's nobody there enforcing rule of law. The rooftop once the once the once the Koreans established that they had no problem smoking somebody that was going to come in and steal our shit, their shit became off limits. Like again, LAPD, LAPD would drive on the road outside of the Korean area and kind of give them a, and then just keep going. Who was, who was supplying? How long were they in place for? I have, I think the, I think the rooftop Koreans were up there for maybe two weeks. Who was supplying them with food and water and stuff? Oh, they they, it it, that turned into a community event, like it turned into a community event. Like when we when we got there and we were uh, when we got there and we were in that in that na- upper class Mexican neighborhood, like all night long the police would show up, the cops would come <laughs> to our to our posts and they would be like, "Hey man, you guys hungry?" Fucking McDonald's just loaded up our truck, our car with food. You, they, they're so glad you're here. And so all night they're bringing us shit from liquor stores, anything that was in the town that had not been burnt out yet. Those people were like, "Give this, go, give this to the Marines, right?" And so these guys are, these guys are doing it, and uh, um, all night. And then during the day there was a giant park that we would stay in. Uh, it had a community center, and so we'd go inside and sleep in the community center. And that, like, the very first night we, you know, we eat McDonald's all fucking night long and all kinds of other weird shit, and uh, it's it's like four thirty, it's like four thirty. Uh, now it's probably like three o'clock. We have to post up at five, right? The gunny comes in, and <laughs> he's kicking everybody, kicking everybody. Get the get get up, get up. Three a.m. Oh, it's three. It's a uh, p.m. Three p.m. Because we, you know, we close the place down. Okay. We're we're on post all night, and uh, he's kicking. He's like, "Get up, 
get and we're like what he goes i don't i don't care if you eat any of it but you you go get a plate everybody has to go get a plate go get a fucking plate well the the neighborhood it turned out and you know it was a mexican neighborhood they had turned out and they had a huge just i mean probably a, a buffet they had a they had a mexican buffet set up for 500 people and there really was only a hundred of us there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so we're all, like, oh, I can't, I can't eat it. But they were, you know, it, it, and they, they fed us every single day, every day. So nobody was, they didn't prosecute any good guys. Like they never went after those Koreans or anything. Uh, no, I, they didn't go after any of them Koreans. For Did sure. you hear about anybody else defending their own shit and protecting their property? Cause all we ever heard was like the Koreans. The Koreans, you know? uh, and that's all I ever heard of was the Koreans. I didn't hear about anybody else trying to do it. If that happened today, what do you think would happen? Well, if it happened today, like today, um, task force would be set up. Like task force, they would set up a task force. It would include federal agents and all kinds of other entities. And they would go disarm the Koreans. Guaranteed. They wouldn't be allowed to, they wouldn't be allowed to defend their property. They would go and disarm them, a hundred percent. There's no, there's no fucking way. Now the question would be: They would still let the riots happen, though. Oh, a hundred percent. They get, there's nothing. The, in the big scheme of things, all they'd have to do, all they literally would have to do, is turn off the fucking cell phones, and fucking squash that. That would be that. Well, they, everybody uh, would go home. They didn't have cell phones. And Correct, but didn't. now. They didn't have cell phones back then. Those but, motherfuckers wouldn't know how to operate without cell phones. But literally, when you think about it, I don't. I think there's. And I'm sure the internets will correct me if I'm wrong, but I think we're approaching like 38 million in Los Angeles County, maybe even more. Um, but if we go back to 1992, uh, if a hundred thousand people, okay, if a hundred thousand people, which is not a, it's not a big number. I mean, think about 38 million, a hundred thousand people is not a big number. That's that's a minority. If a hundred thousand people decide that they are going to break into every Kmart. In Los Angeles County. Sheriff's Department can't do anything. Right. And they can't. They right. don't have the manpower to do that. They don't have the manpower. Yeah, maybe they can defend maybe they can defend one Kmart, the one in Beverly Hills, but all the other Kmarts are getting burnt down. There's yeah, nothing they can do about it. As soon as it goes savage. Yeah. And they and they don't and realistically realistically you don't want law. You don't want local law enforcement to be putting those uh, to putting the, be putting those rioters down uh, through extreme violence, because that again, it's the truth. Vi violence it. only begets violence, and if you if you squash a hundred thousand, if you squash a hundred thousand guys with gunfire or whatever, the next day there's going to be three hundred thousand, and the, and the, that three hundred thousand that shows up the next day are looking at cops like they're the bad guys. So it's it's really hard. It's it's a lot easier to be like bring in the national guard or bring in the because let it be someone else's Yeah, when, let it be let it be somebody else. It's e it's much easier to say that the, you know, LA County uh the LA County Sheriff's Department does not have the resources or the training to deal with this problem than to really understand that LA County Sheriff's Department or Los Angeles PD those guys live in the community. You know, those, they live in the community and you, you can't have, you can't have 300,000 people suddenly look at you like you are an enemy because they will burn you out. Plain and simple. So after the, after the riots, what happened next? Like what was the catalyst to the riots? It was the, Rodney the, King. the, the they, two, two cops or several cops. Yeah. It was Rodney beat King. Rodney King. Yep. And then they found them not guilty or whatever. Riots them kicked off. Riots retried kicked them. Off. Where did, uh. Was it Reginald Denning? The tr was it that the truck driver? He's, he might be the opening salvo of real violence. Somebody pulled him out. They pulled. He, he, he they stopped. stopped his truck. He well, he stopped his truck. They pulled him out and they beat him with an inch of his life. They caved his head in with a cinder block. Yeah, beat him with an inch of his life, and most of those guys didn't go to jail. Not not for long enough, for sure. So are you watch? Do you watch um, the Sean Ryan show? I do. I do watch it. Okay. Yeah. Did you see the? Did yeah, you watch I saw the video? Uh -huh, I saw Fucking it. insane. Yeah. Are you aware of? Did you watch the video? Yeah. So, 
that was a politician, like that dude um, that they they actually ran up on um, that had allowed all that, and then the doctor and all that shit. And then while they were in the chat room, within seconds, yeah, all these adult men are are thinking that this guy's a thirteen. Like somebody's gonna fucking nope. S- s- what? No, no. My concern is for the kid. Somebody's gonna snatch that fucking kid up. He's like, I eat. Chick Fil A every day at twelve forty five, and yeah. I get a can of soup from Walmart every day. Like you need some fucking, you need maybe. some security. Maybe Sean, you better you better watch your boy. Maybe maybe they'll snatch him up. Maybe uh, NSA will be like, hey, mm. you can do all this. You can do all the same thing you're doing now, but from our basement. And then NSA will do what NSA does. They will collect all that information and they will use it as leverage against whoever and, and the not politicians are. arrest any yeah. of those fucking pedophiles. I mean, that's what Epstein was doing. It was, it, that's all it was, was a class, clandestine information gathering uh, mission to get dirt on all those people and then be able to use it on them when it was necessary to use it on them. That's all it was. I think we should buy that kid's service. His $50 a month package or oh, whatever. $50 a month package, yeah. yeah. Uh, what is it? It, it, he he takes your information, puts oh. it into his database or whatever, and finds literally every mention, every photo of you. He takes a picture of you, like right now, and then runs it through this fucking facial recognition shit. Yeah. And it finds everywhere on the internet that anything mm. is posted about you, previous, future, anything, no. uh, all your passwords. Hey, you need to change all your passwords. You need to use a password fucking management system. I don't want him to. I don't want anybody to see all that shit I was doing in the eighties. Well, I mean, I mean, there was no internet in the eighties. All that, uh, all that porn we were doing back then. I don't, I don't, I don't need to bring. That's a rough time in my period in my my life. I don't need to bring all that up. Was that prior to the Marine Corps, or were you in the? Yeah, if I say eighties, it would have been yeah. prior to the Marine Corps. It been prior to Marine Corps. Um, yeah, no, I, it again. It just shows. It just shows how little. Okay, you have one. You have one of two things going on, right? Either it's so pervasive, like it's so it's so pervasive and so everywhere, right? It's so everywhere and it's so everywhere that law enforcement does not have the capability to even handle handle it. And therefore, because they don't have the capability of handling it, they don't do anything about it. Or they are culpable. Um, I mean, him being able to bring those, like, literally just like, hi. Here's your <laughs> and, guy. And a, and a dude's on it that quick. The With all the resources and money that we give to the FBI, the NSA, the CIA, and all that, you you would actually have to think that it would be impossible for an adult male to meet a minor on an open chat room anywhere. You would have to think it would be impossible. They, and with all the fucking shows out there catching these motherfuckers, right, to catch a predator and all that shit, can they still fucking show up? Uh, I think it's just, uh, I think it's, uh, you know, when you think about those shows, yeah, it's, if, such a small, it's such a small bucket. And if they're so bold that they'll show up, right? And then they get burned right there in Walmart or wherever. Imagine how many they showed up to. They're so bold that they'll fucking do it. Imagine how many they got away with prior to that. Yeah, that, the the dude walking in the house with a bag of donuts and condoms, that's not the first house, right? When Chris Ryan catches that guy, that's not the first time it happened, right? It's not the first time it happened. Like, uh, I, I used to, <laughs> as a young lad, I was in love once with a, a, a young lady and uh, I used to sneak to her house in the middle of the night right I would sneak out we all did climb over the climb I would I would go out the back sliding glass door climb on the fence climb on the uh, uh, patio cover walk across the roof <laughs> and go down these things that were in the front to get to the front yard so I didn't have to walk past my mom's my mom's window and I would go to her house. And it, anyways, end up getting caught, right? By who? By my mom. Get caught. And they're like, you know, in the interrogation, they're talking about, you know, you know, you can't get away with this, blah, blah, blah. And 
I had already been, I had already been to her house like a hundred times, right? you know, a hundred times. So, you know, it's, it's one of those things that if you, uh, if you're walking in the house with a sack full of condoms, this is not, that's not your first rodeo. And you know, the question for Chris Ryan and people, was it Chris Ryan? Not Chris Ryan. Um, who the guy? Sean Ryan. No, the guy that did the catch a predator. I don't know. There's a few of them. I can't think of his name. You know who he is. Anyway, anyways, we got him. But the question, the question for that show would be, you know, because it's, it's probably what, fifteen years old at least. At least fifteen years old. The question for the show is, where are those guys that they arrested? Yeah, where are they now? Right. There's, I'll bet there's a good chance that all those guys are back on the street and yeah. they're reoffending. They're just they're reoffending. So the, you know, it's it's a. It's a it's a duty of all parents to take care of their children. I Pay attention you, to what they're doing. I think you have people in positions of power that are involved in that shit. A hundred percent. And I think they just all co mingle. Well, I what I think what I think they do is they try and lessen they try and lessen the damage for whatever it is. It's like California reducing, you know, re, uh, California reducing the age that uh it always surprises me when the these guys. Is or, it surprises me when these guys do this show, right? And he he couldn't get it out. Like it's it's minor attracted person, right? Is what they're trying to change it to map. They, it's it's hurtful to call them pedophiles. You have to call them maps now. Minor attract. Like you're not allowed to say, a hey, bum, a transient, homeless person, right? The new term that they want you to they they physically want you to use, and they themselves are using, is uh, unhoused neighbors. You're not allowed to call them homeless anymore because it's hurtful, right? Well, you can. So we want to lessen the term of pedophile, and they fit. They literally. That's a thing in California, right? Yeah. Minor attracted person. And they're trying to lower the threshold for consent to fourteen. I think is. I the, think it's lower than that. Is it? Yeah. And then there was several other states, but the dude being interviewed, he didn't know that. I mean, maybe, maybe, maybe he's just like fucking jolt cola and yeah. in the basement on the fucking the the 10 fucking monitors on the keyboard right maybe he doesn't know but i mean it's it's fucking crazy yeah you have to remember that when somebody says you can't say that anymore who who who's saying that like again pedophile is a pedophile uh map if you say map what you were trying to do is recognize that somehow that's okay. okay yes. That's so a, yeah. a pedophile is a pedophile. A bum is a bum. You know, it, it is what it is. I don't care that you are so stupid that you think you can't use those words anymore. Where are the, <laughs> where's the group of guys that you're not fucking hearing about, right? The kid that was on Sean's show. Where's the fucking goon squad that he's working with, right? Or or the dude that he's handing information to and maybe there's some fucking demarcation he's not aware. Why do, are these not being why are they not popping up fucking hanging from the light post at fucking Court Square? Or fucking wrapped up in barbed wire and fucking ha- burnt up. Like they used to hang dudes. They would duck like HA some of the motorcycle clubs would hang dudes upside down in fucking parks by their feet, wrapped in duct tape and light them on fire and walk away, yeah. right? Where is that happening at? Um, all to include your to include your motorcycle gangs, clubs. I guess we're not allowed clubs. to call them cl- gangs anymore. You, whatever they are, um, where everybody's too comfortable, man. We're just we're just comfy. Like you hear about it, like you'll hear about dude drags dude drags pedophile off his young daughter and kills her. Yes, and, uh, you, and they you, still give him fucking six years in prison. You'll hear about shit like that, but again, we are so comfortable that we are so comfortable that the the goon squad, like as you say, the goon squad, they're comfy too. They're at home. And I got They're I gotta, watching I TV. I have to fucking believe that they're out there doing work. They're not. No we, one. They're, they're not because the point of doing work, the point, the point of doing that type of work. Is so people know that that work's being done. You but want it's just, you want you want the pedophiles to know that behind every corner, behind every wall, and I'm not just using pedophiles, but you know, right, you want them to know it's just good that, versus evil. That you you know that you are being hunted. They're, they that is why they're so out there. That's why you can have somebody on Facebook that's like, I'm a map. You can have that because 
they're not afraid. It's the same thing with like when the, when the LGBT community is running around saying that we're being hunted. We're being, no, you're not. No, you're not. Only the second half of you. Well, you're not. Cause you're not, nobody, you, you're not afraid. If you were, if you were really, if, if dudes in black trench coats with really cool hats on were combing the neighborhoods looking for you, you wouldn't be on Facebook. You'd be in somebody's goddamn attic hiding out. What are the hats? The really cool hats. What are the, the hats? The, the German. The oh, German. got you, got you, got you. Okay. You'd be hiding in a goddamn basement. Gotcha. So don't, don't tell me about how you're. You know that the that the the United States. You know the right wing is hunting down transgenders. I mean, the last two serious incidents you had in your community was other transgenders. So I don't want to hear it. It's bullshit. It, I th- I think that the feds would spend more money and time hunting down hunters. Oh yeah, yeah. Than the criminals. Like if you had a group together that was hitting those motherfuckers, that's what would be on the news. Yeah, if you the hunt for the literally, fucking. literally, if you had, uh, let's say, a, if you had a pedophile, it was, or a ring of them. Just we'll just say one pedophile that was killed, and all his crime was completely documented, like documented. So he's hanging from a noose in his apartment, and his crime is completely documented. Depending on the city, they would start a task force to find out who killed him. And now I say depending on the city because there's some cities where they would just be like, it looks like this motherfucker committed suicide. <laughs> there are some places like, like it, it, this, is this, much, probably, this is too much paperwork. This is probably not, this is probably not going to seem correct, but um, like if, if, if you really want to kill a pedophile, Best place to do it is in Detroit. <laughs> Why? Highest unsolved murder rate in the world. And that's because they're underpaid, understaffed, and so it's much easier for you to go. <sighs> Fuck it. Just just file it for later. Maybe maybe twenty years from now, cold case will solve this bitch. It's just much easier. Some DNA comes up. Yeah. What's that uh what's that crazy ass shotgun? You have the uh, the one I have now is the uh, Origin Twelve. Not a Vepper. Not a Vepper. What's a Vepper? A Vepper is a, a Vepper is the uh, Russian, like the Russian shotgun. The Russian uh, magazine fed shotgun was kind of like the first. Like they were the first. They basically took an AK action and turned it into a shotgun. Is that the is that the Sega? Kind of Sega, yeah, Sega is another that, one. Is but that's Vepper still and a Russia. Sega, two different. They're things? two different. It's kind of like, but it's like. Uh, I don't know. It's like Mossberg and uh, Remington. They're they're both making shotguns, and they're both Russian guns. And they are the magazines as robust. Uh, I believe the magazine on the on the Sega shotguns they're they're pretty robust. If so, the mag pouches that we just made for your thing, yeah. Will the other mags the others will fit, fit? in it? Yes, okay. definitely they'll fit. Okay. What? So the first shotgun I remember uh, well, well spas obviously right. Yeah. But for a mag fed, was the spas wasn't mag fed. No, it wasn't. It was tube fed. Tube fed. Um, the first mag fed was that USAS 12. USAS right? 12, yeah. Or um, the original was actually made by Daewoo, I believe. Do Might you, have been, yeah. Do you remember going down, I think it was Gas Lamp or right near Gas Lamp, the big surplus store? Uh huh. Was it G.I. Joe's surplus? I, it was I believe downtown. it was. I believe it was. Wasn't G.I. Jack Joe's. part owner in that? Uh, yeah, I, he probably was. I think he had his hooks in there. That whole city block was all. Gun shop, surplus shop, yeah. and when you go in, like they had the basement in the there. The basement, yeah. Um, he had all kind. Of, he had like surgical shit in there, yeah. and um, that crazy um, aluminized like suit to walk through fire that I had oh, yeah, in there. Yeah. Like I remember seeing yeah, one of those. He had as a that kid. in there. Yeah, I remember being down there, and they were filming um, Lorenzo Lamas and the Indian dude. I don't remember what his name is. I think he's actually Hawaiian. They were filming that TV show. And it had it all closed off, and the, an explosion went off, and a car came flying down the road. And I can't remember the name of that show, though, but they were filming that when I was down there. Uh, anyways, I remember the first time I saw that gun, I think there were several gun shops right there on that block, um, was in there. And they had that, that 
but it was a drum, right? I think yeah, it was like a drum. twenty round drum. But Probably I know I know they had mags for it, but I never actually saw one. I yeah. wonder if those are still. I mean, I'm, people who own them probably still own them, but I wonder if those mags fit this pouch also. Every every year or so, I get somebody's like, "Hey, do you make a pouch for this magazine?" I'm like, "No, you know why? Because you're the only dude that fucking asked for it." <laughs> there, I mean, I, it's, guys always come in and, or or guys email or show up and they're like. I can't find a, I can't find this thing. I go, you know why? Because nobody fucking wants it. Because if somebody wanted it, you'd be able to find it. I was looking for, because uh, again, this I got the shotgun back. Okay, yeah, I so like start it. start there. What what was it that you originally had? So originally, I had the uh, other than a firearm. So this this company made this thing. Is that an AO, AOW? Yeah. Other, other no, any, it's any not an AOW because it it wasn't class. So they there's this weird thing. If you see all those little uh, the little shotguns with the bird heads on them. Oh, is this uh, what's the one that, other than uh, a firearm? What's the real something? famous one? Uh, I can't think of it. Doesn't uh, Mossberg makes it? Yeah, Mossberg. Mossberg and Remington both make one. Shockwave. This is the Mossberg one. And they shoot like half shells or something. Well, they'll shoot. They shoot full shells. Uh, I put half shells in mine more, so I can more get more in, in the there. Cat. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I get this. I buy the shotgun. And super it's a, expensive. It's a semi-auto when you buy it. Semi-auto, little teeny gun. It had a folding stock. Magazine's bigger than the gun. Magazine's bigger than the gun, uh, and it it ran good. If you if you search the archives, there's a there is actually a video of me shooting it out back here. Really, the, that yeah. thing? Uh huh. That thing. The wow. original small one. We did a. Uh, it was a. Uh, um, it was a video for bags. I don't remember what bag it was. I I, I believe that thing fits. Uh, I believe the small version fit in a tool bag. A, a tool bag, tool bag, the little. Tool no, no, no. Bag? I'm oh, sorry, large the big tool one. bag. Large tool bag. Uh, so we did a we did a video back there of me shooting it, and then I don't know, like a year later, the ATF came out and they said, "Hey, guess what? We we lied to you. Um, that thing's not legal anymore. It's illegal." And so the company they worked a deal out with the ATF to where. If you sent your gun back, they would send you a new one. Now, you could you could you could NFA it so you could do the $200 tax and keep your small little shotgun. They had like three options. Now that the shotgun itself, the one that we bought, the one that was bought and sold, that had to be destroyed. So even if you wanted to NFA, you had to get a new shotgun. Which doesn't make any sense. Um, so I do all the paperwork because, you know, I like to stay legit. I do all the paperwork. Company's like eight months. It's going to be an eight-month turnaround. You'll have your new shotgun. So I opt for the most legal version. So I'm like, fuck the short barrel. Fuck all that. I'll just go with the full legal version so I don't have to deal with these, you know, Bureaucrats. So this thing you have now has an 18-inch barrel. 18-inch barrel, yeah. And, full a, and a stock, so it's like a fucking real shotgun now. That's yeah, like it's a, a it's a full size. It's the same size as my Benelli now. Just a cool semi-auto. Just fast. So I get the damn thing and I send it in, and eight months go by, nothing. A year goes by, nothing. Now the I. They're just like, send it in the mail. And I'm like, fuck that. I, I went to a gun store, had the gun store send it so it could be insured, right. all that. It's all yep. through the gun store. Uh, and uh, like, I'm contacting them. The gun store's contacting them. They're like, you know, it's just we're a small company. It's taking time, blah, blah, blah. And I, it got to the point where it was at a, it was, it was like, if, if I ever see it again, I see it again. Like I actually forgot about it. It had been so long. It had been so long. That every now and then one would pop up in my feed somewhere, like a like I would be looking at Gun Broker and I'd be like, "Oh, Origin Twelve, I should buy that." Wait a minute, I have one. I haven't got it. What do those sell for now? Four grand now. What were they? They were twenty nine. That's still a lot. Yeah, that's a lot. It, it's an expensive shotgun. Like it wasn't it wasn't cheap. What's an eight seventy cost now? Eight hundred bucks maybe. What? Yeah, I think they're up there now. Well, I mean, you could get a used one for five, maybe. Really, man? I yeah. remember seeing like five gallon buckets full of them. <laughs> Those days are over, John. The days are. Why don't you, when you're not doing anything? Well, I don't want you to do this, Brandel. When you have an opportunity, 
Look up the price. Look up the price of a Russian SKS, and then show the price to John. He'll shit. Um, they uh. Anyway, so three almost three years. We hit the three year mark, and uh, it showed up at the gun shop, and I was able to get it. So, what do the magazines cost for that thing? Uh, a ten rounder, I believe, is sixty seven. There, it's a little expensive. It's ex- it's a it's an expensive shotgun to get in. It's not for the poor. Do P mags still cost ten dollars? Uh, no, no, they're they're not. They haven't. Inflation hasn't hit them too hard. They're like thirteen and fourteen bucks now. So where's uh, are they in Colorado still? Didn't they move? They moved to, from somewhere to somewhere. Oh man, I I want to say they moved to Texas. Maybe I, I know they did move because of the. So is back. is Texas doing the the gun thing where they're like, if you live in Texas, you don't have to register your suppressors you can just come buy one if you're a citizen so te- texas passed that law it, wait, it was machine guns and no it was just, just, just it was silencers just, it was just suppressors texas passed that law that if you bought a suppressor that was made in texas and it was staying in texas you didn't have to pay the, you didn't have to pay the federal government because it's <clears throat> intercommerce has so the, has the federal government ever flexed on that and tested oh that? they they flexed on it immediately it's all in the courts right now so uh, is Texas still selling them? No, you you uh, the law is the the federal law is still in effect. Um, federal law again. Here's the crazy thing: when you know when like the governor of uh, Florida says we're banning Bitcoin, or we're banning CBDC. not Bitcoin, yeah, the Texas federal, did too. The federal currency. Um, sorry, federal law supersedes state law, and. You know, if the feds really want to flex, they can flex. It's like, for example. I think you're going to see it happen in June. Maybe. That's what everybody says. Um, maybe. So, I mean, a good, a good example would be if Joe Biden was like, fuck it, can't pay the bills. And he just raided every dispensary in California. It would be 100% legal because it's illegal to sell and grow marijuana. So he could he could literally steal all that Are money. Are they denying um, gun registration? Guys go to buy guns and they have a weed card. Have they, because I, 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 I hear all the stuff people well, talking if about you're, that. If, you're, uh, if you have a weed card, I mean, if you have a weed card, you can't, you can't pass your background check. But have they denied anybody's I background don't checks? I, I don't wonder know. if that's been. Well, okay, here's the thing, John. There is a question on there that if you have a weed card, and then that's you would, perjury. You would have to check yes. So if you have a if you have a weed card, there's a question on there that you would have to check yes. If you check that box, yes. Doesn't matter what the federal government does. The gun store is liable and they can't sell you a firearm. So I wonder if they're doing that though. I, I, or if they're just kind I, of looking think, the other way. No, no, no. I, no you cuz again, the gun store becomes liable. So if, for example, if I check that, if, if I, if I put a yes in a no box, okay, put a yes in a no box, doesn't matter what it is on that sheet. And the gun store goes, ah, it doesn't really matter. You're okay. We're going to sell you this gun. The ATF is going to come and close that gun store because they look at their sheets and they're going to be like, uh, yeah. well, not, not only that, you have to send that in, you have to report it. So you report it and then yeah, you have ATF's somebody looking for yeah, anything to shut stores. But I mean, what I'm saying is, you have something on here that you have already been told denies me the capability to buy a firearm, and yet you sold me a firearm. Got it. That that's a serious felony for that so, gun store. So, so yeah. So do you think dudes are just marking no? Yeah. Or yeah. do you think most weed smokers are super pacified so they don't? No, I I I think they're just marking no. So that's perjury. It is perjury, but if you look at... Uh, Do you know the definition of perjury? No. It's entering the property, entering a property with the intent to commit a crime. Okay. Makes That's sense. That's perjury. Um, so if you went to the DMV yeah. with a fake, with fake documents to get a fake driver's license, okay. right? That's perjury. That's also burglary, right? Entering the... the, the, the so... Anyways, perjury, entering the property with the intent to commit a crime. I have that ingrained in my memory. Um, yeah, so they, uh, so no, they wouldn't. I think that people that have marijuana cards are not checking 
the boxes correctly. But then again, if you look at if you look at uh, the FBI's conviction of people who have deliberately lied on their background check, they don't convict anybody for that. I don't think uh, <laughs> I don't I don't think your your violent criminals have a weed problem. I don't think that's the problem. I think yeah, I, but some, it's not it's other. not that it, it could be anything, right? No, so I know. Let's say uh, let's say you are uh, let's say you were convicted of domestic violence. Okay, D- domestic violence is a reason to not sell somebody a firearm. You're convicted of domestic violence. You lie on your form. That form, let's say that they submit that form, and then it comes back and it says, no, he. we know he just lied on his fucking form. They don't arrest him and convict him of a crime. Well, they do later. They do. If, they're, if they're looking at them, if they're looking at them, well, uh, and that name gets typed, what I'm saying well, is, well, here's, here's our probable cause for warrant. Or but what I'm, saying, what I'm saying is yes. you can actually go on the FBI website and see how many NICs or how many background checks were failed. So you can look on the you can look on the FBI website and you can see that three hundred and thirty eight thousand background checks uh, failed that they were denied a firearm for one reason on that sheet. Okay, now if you were denied a firearm for a reason on that sheet, then you broke a law. Out of those three hundred and eighty six thousand people, none of them even get talked to. They don't. They just they're just like you don't get a gun. That's it. So, I mean, you so, could argue that the point is, you could argue that the point of that is just to deny somebody a firearm. I think but it's again, and catalog. Use it in maybe, the future. Maybe. What, um, so Texas. Yeah, Texas. Texas is like, okay, you can build suppressors and you don't have to wait and do the tax stamp. Right. Did they give anybody suppressors under that? I don't think so. I think, I think the ATF. So the feds are like, squash, not happening, and then well, Texas uh, it's didn't. Not, it's not. They, I think, the minute they passed that law, that the ATF, oh, excuse me, filed an injunction, and so it is being litigated in the courts right now. It does not look good for the ATF. Why didn't Texas just be like, "Fuck you guys"? Because again, federal law supersedes state law. I, and I hear you. What's to, what's uh, going to happen though? Well, y- we're not going to fix your potholes on the interstate. N- no, but then, okay. So if if the, if you're a state, and you decide you're like, I, I really don't care what the federal government. We'll just we'll just talk about the federal government, right? Well, I don't really care what the federal government it doesn't have to have anything to do. Like for example, I would be more impressed if Texas did this based off of the illegal immigration that they're having to deal with we'll talk every about month, that in a minute, yeah. right? Uh, if if a state says, "Fuck you." I don't care what your rules are. We're not following your rules. We're going to do this. There are, I'm, I'm, I, I'll bet there's, we'll just say in the state of Texas, there's probably 10 million federal employees. Yes, at least. So you, it would not just be fuck you. You would have to immediately go, that building's closed, that building's closed, that building's closed. You people need to pack all your shit, and you need to go wherever you federal people are. You'd have to literally kick them out of the state because. What if they live in the state though? What if they're from the state? Again, you, 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 we're gonna kick them out, or you just have to get a new job. I mean, you you, you have to look at the poison from the poison tree, right? You got to go back to the flagpole. You either you either have to you either have to swear allegiance or be banished. That's the only way it works. Because well, again, it, wasn't if, it join or die? Yeah. Again, if you. If I say that suppressors are are legal, and you are a federal employee, you're we'll just say ATF. You're an ATF agent, and you're in Dallas, Texas, and the state of and the state of Texas goes, "Fuck you, suppressors are legal. You can't do anything about it." Now, I'm an ATF agent. I am legally bound to enforce the law. So, if there is a transaction in front of me, of a suppressor. Or if there's an illegal transaction, it doesn't matter whether you think it's right or not. It's my job to enforce that law. So why would I not enforce that law and arrest that individual? If I arrest that individual and I incarcerate him, now, again, the ATF doesn't have incarceration capabilities in in Texas. They would have to take him to the sheriff's department and put him in a sheriff's holding. Ah, they'd take him to a, or a federal. A federal. Or a, yeah. or a federal prison. MCC or something. Right? They would, take him to a, they would t- have to take him somewhere. 
Um, but if you're the state of Texas and you have decided, fuck you, federal government, now you have a situation where you have to use force to remove that individual from custody. So now the first shots of the next revolution have been fired over, over a fucking muffler, <laughs> really. The mufflers that don't really work that well. I think if it happened in one state, it would immediately happen in other states. Only, only if Texas was, was successful. If Texas was successful in purging Texas of federal authority, then yes, it would happen. That's a, it's the same thing when the it's the same thing when uh, when the states when the first when the first uh, secession worked. It it was dominoes. It they weren't all like, hey, guess yeah. what? We're, it was dominoes. If people if, people think that it happened super fast, yeah, it, 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 it was it dominoes over a period of like right. five years. It was dominoes falling, and so. If Texas was successful, then other states would follow. So it would it would it would be imperative, and that and that's where the problem comes in. It would be imperative for the union to do everything in its power to keep Texas from succeeding. So now you have a full on war breaking out over again. In this scenario, it's just a suppressor. But you know, crazier shit. Like we, you know, the reason why the United States, the reason why the United States exists, is because of some fucking tea. Who fights that war? Well, you again. In in Texas, you would have to have a you would have to have a uh, you would have to have a nostalgic, um, uh, resurgent of Texas pride. Right, the republic. We are the Republic of Texas, well, and know, in that case, it would be everybody. There's a bunch of dudes in Texas, man. Oh no, I know, I know. There's a lot of them dudes I know. in Texas. And I and I, I I like using Texas as the example because I feel like Texas is the only place that could do it. But again, those dudes, they're super comfortable. Have you heard yeah. They're comfy. Yeah. Um have you heard of Texit? Uh, yeah, I've heard it. Texas yeah. Exit, right? It's actually on yeah. the ballot to be voted for now. Um Jack Spearco had him on a show a few years ago. Very interesting show. Um, there's a lot of momentum behind that. So we have a couple Patreon uh, questions oh, here. Oh, Patreon. Let's see Guys, what we got Patreon. Uh, on Pulling the Thread podcast here, if you want to ask questions, uh, the way you do that is, I'm, I'm reading something here, Crunch Jim. Um, the way you do that is you join our Patreon. It's five bucks. You ask questions, and then uh, we go off of those questions and that's what these here are that's what the whole last episode was built off of um chewing meat is it good yeah it's good i mean you've been here a long time what does that mean well it's you know it's it's good carne asada but it's not it's not california carne asada it's the last time you had fucking carne asada from california last year i feel like if i went back to california right i keep saying Roberto's, Roberto's, right? San Diego carne asada. I feel like if I went back there, I wouldn't like it anymore. No. Like, I have this idea from 20 years ago of how great it was. We were poor then. It's not, um, it's not like the, it's not like the kid foods that you remember that you eat now and you're like, oh my God, that's terrible. Who's got the best hamburger? Who has the best hamburger? Fast food. In and out? No, oh, five guys. Five Guys. See, I don't. I went to Five Guys. Is that the place that has all the fucking potatoes everywhere inside? Yeah. yeah. Fucking was not good. Like in and out, right? No, so in we and we roll terrible. in. Okay, in and out. There's a, they're opening one in Franklin. So we roll into Vegas, right? And we always go get an In and Out burger. Mm-hmm. I get sick every fucking time I eat at that motherfucker. I'm like, this food's not even that good. I, no, it never was. We always went there because it was open till like three in the morning. But I will. I'm. I. I. I believe that in the confines of your memories of albertos roberto's albertos hoy yeah. when you go to that one in oceanside because i did okay the one down from your shop we went to all the ones in kearney yes yeah, but shit. i mean the one down from your shop because the only reason why i say this is because i did this one that was like los ponchos or something yeah because i did this the last time i was back there it's still there it's still there and it was 100 percent without a doubt exactly how i remembered it like no there wasn't any Exactly how I remembered it. 
I'm sure. I, I feel like that the guy that was cooking the burritos back in the '80s is Same still dude. back there. Yeah, still. Back I would there. get uh, pollo asada, right? So it's like mar- it's these big chunks, and everywhere here, you order carne asada, guys. If you come to Tennessee, don't go fucking. <laughs> don't come here for Mexican. You, everything's like hamburger. They yeah. chop the shit up so fucking small. So there is a taco shop by the interstate now. That's actually it's really good. Hmm. I've been there probably. When you say by the interstate, are we talking uh, six forty one? Six forty one. Yep. Okay. Um, right by the new gas station, they're putting in a pilot. I hear there's a Denny's going in there. Yeah. Yeah, your 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 hill is fucked. <laughs> they're putting all this infrastructure in. Yeah, they're they're double lane in that road for sure. But that has nothing. Like, where's it going? I don't know. So, um, yeah, there's they put the pilot in, and now they're putting something across the way. Uh, right there. So, yeah. I don't know. We'll move. Where should we move to? I don't know. The, the The problem is, and I don't have a problem with this, but the the places to move from a business perspective will be even worse for you. Yep. And, you know, because I, I, you know, I, Carthage. Yeah, that, that, I keep so I keep waiting. I, I want to go. I want to go so, when I when I see that there's a guy that that drives around. He does like these tours where he's like, worst place in Alabama, worst place in Mississippi, worst place. And when he's driving around those when he's driving around those towns, I'm like, mm, man, I can just smell cheap land. Like, yeah, those places are terrible if you have to have a job. But if you don't have to have a job, oh my god, you could make your own kingdom. Well, I just keep waiting for society to collapse, and then it won't matter. It'll matter even more. I don't think so. I think so. It'll matter even more. Because when the dude comes, when the dude goes up the road and's like, hey, we need to survey your, and, and the fucking, somebody just shoots him dead, he ain't going to make it here. Oh, well, you're, yeah. I mean, they're not going to be surveying the road if society collapses, but then you're going to have to deal with, you're going to have to deal with fiefdoms. You're going to have to deal with that guy who owns all those tanks in town. So the dude came in here. Amanda said he's super nice. Of course he is. Um, and they're going to drill, right? And he's like, we need to take some cores some drill samples. He said, every time we drill here, you guys always have a lot of pyrite. And whatever that means, whatever comes with pyrite, we can't use it for fill. But they're still going to cut the hill because that's where the road's right. going, right? So they're going to basically cut... It, the front of the hill there, which was, you know, we were kind of in a valley, so we don't catch any of the wind, we don't catch the sound, none of that. Well, they're going to chop that out. So when you walk out the front door of the shop, you're going to see fucking headlights, right? You're going to have all of that fucking road noise. The The way they have surveyed it, they're going to cut all the way, that swale we put in, that hill, everything, they're going to come right up to our fucking fence line. So what the fuck can you do with that? I mean, we can plant pine trees or bamboo right there, but we lose access because we have to implant on our side of that property line right their their easement or whatever so it really fucks us hugely so maybe we buckle down for two years make a fucking just pour put every bit of effort and energy into business and then up and move just be like fuck you guys i mean they don't care can't yeah they don't care the post office might. I mean, the post office might have like a, yeah, like a cake or something when you leave. They might. The post office might be bummed. I'm uh, sure the post office would be bummed. I mean, especially the way the post office is going now. Like, I think I I I 100 percent believe if we pulled out of this town, that post office would be closed within fucking 18 months. That's probably right. It it takes a it takes a while for the wheels of government to understand that they're losing money. I mean. Not, I mean, they were on the closure. They were they yeah, were in the top saying. three closure list they were for on the, the United States. They were on the closure list, anyways. They were talking about yeah, they a, gave, a mail trailer out there for the freeway. Yeah, they gave me a little plaque. Yeah, it's a little a little plaque. So, yeah, it wasn't even a plaque. They gave me a, a laminated like some shit they printed out of the computer. Um, okay, so what were we talking about? Questions. Questions. Okay, here's your questions. Patreon. Speaking of the border, um, we'll start with this other one. Hey guys, sorry for the long comment. I wonder if Scully can continue his rant. Oh, no, we're going to do the first one. David Guzman. David. Uh, hello, John and Scully. Hello, David. With the end of Title Four, David, I know that you just reduced your Patreon from $15 to 5 also. So just know that I know. 
Um, Maybe we weren't giving him enough value at 15. Not. What do we need to do at 15? Apparently not. David, tell us what we need to do what at do 15, need? and we'll, need? He's, we'll make it happen. Yeah. You're, you all, you want all that green and black shit I don't build, too. You should up your Patreon back to 15. We'll, we'll figure out. What do you need? Uh, uh, John Scully. With High the, point? It, with the, <laughs> with the, have you seen all that? Have you been reading the comments? No. They've been taking all the clips of these videos and turning them into shorts, man. Somebody's like, holy shit, as shitty as a high point firearm is, who would pay for a high point sign? I'm like, thank you for your first comment. <laughs> like, uh, With the end of Title 42 ending across the United States and the COVID-19 emergency declaration ending as well on May 11th, what other consequences, outcomes do you all predict will happen aside from massive influx of illegal immigration that is expected? Thank you. So apparently this ends this week or whatever. Mm -hmm. There's a, a million people have amassed at the border. Do you even know what Title 42 is? Uh, it was just, uh, it was like GWAT. It was special money for them to, special money and enforcement for them to enforce. And part of it was keeping them in Mexico. We are once this ends, that portion of keeping them in Mexico also ends. So they will try. Mexico was keeping them in Mexico, or yeah. we were. We well, basically, what we would do is, <clears throat> basically, no, but basically, what we do is we'd be like, oh, you want to come to the United States? Cool. We're going to do your paperwork. We're going to put you in the system. Go back to Mexico. We'll give you a call. Now it's it's a free for all. So there's there's going to be a, a thousand border agents trying to keep a million out of the United States. With well, a million, there's there's, with a, there's ten thousand border agents, but yeah. but I mean not in one location, right? So I they apparently there's a million people in a mass right now, mm -hmm. a mass of one million people. Yeah. With a million people, I mean you could fucking pull that border fence down. Yeah, uh, you know this is uh this is totally on purpose. It's a uh, it's is being, this going to be another one of those where uh, the Soros Foundation bust all those people in and they're not actually from Mexico? We're going to see Chinamen and oh, it, it, that is the and, that is the problem with what that is the problem with how we are describing this is serious serious immigration from Mexico ended a long time ago. Ninety percent of the people that are going to be coming across this border are not going to be from Mexico. They're going to be from all over the Africa. world. Yeah, yeah, from Africa, from China, from, you know. Iraq. Iraq. They're going to be from all over the world because you have an administration that has basically said, all you have to do is get here and we will, you know, pave the way for you. Because, but the reality is that, m that most people don't even comprehend is if you are, if you are from, uh, if you're from Libya, right, and you have nothing. Your only other choice is to be a slave because that's what Barack Obama created in Libya was a slave trade. For, for real. Like a um, biblical if that's your only, If that's your only option or get to America, I, I don't fault these people at all because we have a system that is completely broken. And if, you, if you're Libyan, I'm just using them as an example. You could be from the Congo. You could be from you know somewhere in China. It doesn't matter. If you can get here. If you can get here, our system is set up in a way that even without exploiting the government, even without exploiting the government handouts, you can become successful, right? You can you can go to little Libya in Los Angeles, open up a falafel shop, and become successful. You could create way, way beyond where you could. Yeah, you can create you can create a place for your family. So if you're you know if you're a hardworking dude from Cong from the Congo or you're a hardworking dude from Kenya. And you can get here. So do you think the people coming in that are going to cause civil unrest and actually fight against U.S. citizens in fighting, do you think that's by design or just a byproduct of? It's just a byproduct. It's just a, it's just a byproduct. Plus, you know, when you have certain, you have certain factions, we're going to see a lot more, we're going to see a lot more violence in border states um, than we already have. Right, yeah, so I, I, I don't think people have a clue the violence yeah. that's happening. Currently. But we're gonna we're gonna see a lot more violence in the border states, and the reason why we're gonna see this violence is because you have a certain faction in the uh, in the administration in D.C. that want to label the cartels as a terrorist organization and go after them with the full might of the U.S. military. Now, 
the cartels don't have to fight in the same manner that we do, right? Yeah. They, they don't have no to rules. fight in the same. They don't have the rules. And they have the equipment. Unlike Syria, unlike Libya, or, you know, unlike all the other places we fought in the world, they share a, a border, a, a very porous border with us. And so a war against the cartels does not happen in Mexico. It happens in San Diego. It happens in Houston. It happens in, you know, maybe in Tennessee. You don't, you know, yeah, you don't know already, how, yeah, they, they you don't know through. how far the cartel's going to go, and they're here already. You know, with the with the amount of narcotics that come across that border, again, the porous border, avocados. But I mean, just the amount of narcotics. Um, you could put, you know, I'm I'm guessing if the cartel wanted to. They could put a million people, they could put a million U.S. citizens in the hospital or in the ground in one day. How would they do that? Through uh, fentanyl, through contamination of drugs that are being pushed throughout the United States. Um, I mean, you can you can look this up on you know YouTube or whatever you want to look it up on. Is the problem with heroin addicts is if heroin if you ha- if you're taking heroin if you if you're a user and Jimmy is selling heroin and one of your friends dies of heroin overdose. You're going to go and buy your heroin from Jimmy because you know, Jimmy's got the real shit that you're going to get the best high out of Jimmy. There was a, uh, when fentanyl first became, when fentanyl first kind of hit the radar, there was 34 people in one park that all fucking frapped out. And that's what they were doing. They were all going, holy shit, Jimmy got the real shit. I'm going to go get my heroin from Jimmy. And it would, I mean, you, they could just add it to every That's what I'm drug. saying. They could they, add it in the meth and they could, get they, all the I mean, you know, to use your example, the, the reality is they could fucking inject it into avocados. Well, I mean, the, the cartel is actually controlling the avocado trade. Yes, but what, but what I'm saying is yeah. they, could, they could sit there and then put that stuff in or just not even put it in there. Get spray bottles and spray it all over avocados, and then send it up to the United States. How many people? How many people would end up in emergency rooms before anyone figured out that it was coming off the avocados? Right. So it's a. It would be a different kind of war with. So do you the think, narcos? Do you think this is this Title Forty Two? Is this a real concern, or is this just another fucking talking point? Like right now, I just heard Janet Yellen saying, uh, "She she's saying we're out of cash if we don't raise the spending limit." Uh, the threshold or whatever, we're out of cash. Got, no, bitch, you guys print cash. What you mean is you're out of fucking money. You guys just create it. Yeah, it's 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 at this at this point, and I know I, I know I I know I wave the flag. I know I wave the flag a lot when it comes to the dollar bill. But at this point, um, the debt ceiling is fake. Correct. Right? It's, yeah. It's the debt ceiling is fake. We're talking about an we're talking about an amount of money that no one. No one on the planet. There's no one on the. There's not somebody in Germany or in the Congo that's going. The Americans are going to pay all that money back. It de- <laughs> it's not real, and most of that debt we owe to ourselves, anyways. So, it's not real. It's just an excuse for them to spend more and more fucking money. That's all it is. And it's, it's an excuse to have, to, for them to you know for but the. They're, but they're worried about you and your. Uh... Yeah, it's, <clears throat> your feet fetish and six hundred dollars. It's the excuse for the federal <clears throat> government to come out every year and say the Pentagon lost thirty four billion dollars. We don't know where it's at. Again, a well, lot. We, we, we know where it is. I, the, it, the Tomahawk missile took out the building that showed where it I, was. You know, the crazy part is that should be convictable, right? It it it, it, it would be convictable for any of us. It should be convictable. I know where that money's at. I would be, I would be more, I would be, I would be more happy. Like I would be more, again, wait, standing on the Pentagon, waving the flag. If the Pentagon, if the fucking guy, if the, you know, secretary Rumsfeld came out and went, we used $34 billion of depart defense department budget for black operations last year for black ops. Okay. I, that may, okay. I understand that. I, I understand that. But to just go, um, we don't know where it's at. We lost it. That fuck. How are how is not how are they not all being convicted of a crime? It's a crime for everybody else. So why isn't the Secretary of Defense Donald Rumsfeld in handcuffs? 
He's dead now, right? Did he die? He might. I, maybe. I don't know. But I'm just saying, any secretary, the, the current secretary of defense came out and said, oh, we fucking, we don't know where all this money's at because we're fucking retarded. That's bullshit. You know where the money's at. It would be better if you just went classified operations. Because when you say we don't know where it's at, like when you when you come out and you go, we don't know where the money, what you're what you're saying is, hey, American people, you are completely stupid. And you're not going to do anything about it anyway, so we can say whatever the fuck we want. All those people should be fucking hanged. Like, hanged. <laughs> well, they're talking about, so the kid, the, you haven't heard shit about this kid, right? That uh, The worst security breach in the history of the United States, oh, yeah. right? Not another fucking word about this kid. But they said it was the worst in the, the history of the uh, United States, right? Well, there's a... There's what, a what about that Hillary Clinton thing, right? Nope, nope. And but they were they were actually saying this kid that was treason he, it's hangable offense. I think the reason why I think the reason why this kid has disappeared is because there is a lot of real there is a lot of real um, there's a lot of real chatter from people that this actually was a disinformation operation and it wasn't what we thought it was. Now the kid was probably the yep. access point, right? He, the kid was probably the access point, but probably a CIA disinformation operation in order to see what information they could get out. Um, and if so, cause, he, cause he had, the, the reality is he had documents. He had internal CIA documents that don't leave the CIA skiff. Right. So to say, you know, Lance Corporal Benatz was in his in his SeaTac or whatever, fucking boop, boop, boop. Oh, look at that document. Let me get that. He, he wouldn't have had access to it. Like, he wouldn't. Like, the right. the president of the United States wouldn't have access to that document because it was an internal document. If, if there was an assassin running around. Yes. What do you think his prior job in the military would have been? If, like, if, you, if there's an, a world-class assassin, right, and he's all trained up, what do you think he used to do in the military, most likely? Um, I mean, most likely, he was probably a... Like an SF guy or a SEAL maybe. or something, yeah, right? Maybe. You wouldn't think like Air National Guard, probably. No, I definitely wouldn't go reserve Air, Air National, National Guard. So you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I definitely would. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't be like, hey, reserve Air National Guard guy. Holy shit. Are you aware that there's a website out there? It's like, it's it's a spoof website, I guess. Maybe I don't know if it was real at one time, but it's 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 not on the black web or dark web or whatever. It's an actually like dot .com address. And this kid went on there and he... Went out and did a, he wants to be an assassin and he's a hitman and fucking put out some uh, job wanted stuff and somebody fucking reeled him in and they just arrested this kid. He's from Tennessee here. I mean, I'm here's, here's the crazy part is, and I know, I, I know that there's some hardworking hit guys. <laughs> don't, don't, don't throw out the hate mail, but you need to, you need to, you need to own your shit. You really need to own your shit. I know there's some, I know there's some, some killers. In the Air Force, like two or three of them. I know there's like two or three killers in the Air Force. Yeah, but, they, they control uh, A-10s and stuff. But, but again, I wouldn't, need, if you were like, if you were like, okay, there's somebody, there's somebody, somebody roaming the countryside, and, uh, an assassin killing all these prime targets. We think he's in the Coast Guard or the Air Force or the Army. I would pick the Coast Guard before I pick the Air Force. <laughs> right they're not even a, they're, they're 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 a major airline they're not even a real service the reality is they're not so and yeah i get it i know some guys but again you need to own your shit you know when i say that you guys aren't a real service the dude that's got the fucking uh the scar heavy and he's in afghanistan smoking fools even he knows that that pj even he knows he's like yeah, it's true. The Air Force really isn't that isn't that much killers, right? Yeah, you don't see guys go from one service to the Air Force. You see them go. I, I mean, mean, we do know a guy. Yeah, we do know a guy, but we I'm do just know saying. A guy. I, again, Air Force, don't get your panties in a wad. But you know, you are like you know, you're kind of like TWA or there's you know, a Pan there's Am a, or some shit like that. There's a short video of you talking about um, Ranger School or Jump School, Jump School, and how they put the Marines in charge. Yeah. There's like 200 comments on there. Guys have shown up. Somebody must have taken, snatched that, and put yeah. it in the, uh, um, the the 
I wish I was a an airborne guy or something because mm-hmm. like they've crawled out of the woodwork. There's 200 comments and every fucking one of them first comment ever on the page. Yeah, uh, whatever. Yeah, they're big mad. They're big mad. Okay, they're second. big mad because they put. I mean, that's a. That's like a common trope. There's another one out there, a, a clip of you saying uh, um, Marines eat their puppies. <laughs> I mean, that's, well, I mean, they do. That's a common trope about airborne school. That, I mean, it, it's not, it's not uncommon. I bet, I bet if we go to, I bet if we go to, uh, if we go to jump school right now and they line up whatever company that you're going to see Marpat at the front of every single one of those squads. Because, I mean, even though the Marine Corps is soft now, it's not as soft as the Army. <laughs> okay, here's the other one. by uh, From Richard Cooper. Thank you, uh, Richard Cooper. Uh, hey, guys. Sorry for the long comment. I wonder if Scully can continue his rant on how current military leadership, like Miley, are so fucking terrible at their jobs and must go. I follow a lot of content of Mike Glover and Andy Stump. And they say the exact same thing. The thing they commonly say is those guys were too senior of an officer. Where is it? Uh, see more. Those guys. Uh, where did? Oh, this is a long one. Uh, Mike Glover commonly say those guys were too senior of an officer to ever carry a rifle, much less fire it in battle. They don't know the feeling of adrenaline, fear at two thirty in the morning on a street corner thinking you're about to die. Just wonder what Scully thinks is the problem with current leadership and what needs to be done going forward. It feels like we're going to need some amazing leaders in the years to come. Thanks, guys. So for guys that don't know, Mike Glover was a SF dude, uh, CIA contractor, uh, Andy Stump, uh, team guy. He's in Whitefish, Montana now, um, and they both have excellent podcasts and content. Um, Thoughts? Um, I just had a conversation about this with a special forces guy. <sighs> okay. What we need to, what we need to understand is we spent 20 years in Afghanistan. Is this intentional? 20 years. It depends on what you mean intentional. We spent, somebody, is somebody purchased that is somebody was bought for instance by, is this designed on purpose to weaken our military so that for instance, China can infiltrate us? Um, at if a you, higher leadership is now put un, incompetent people in charge. If you look at what, if you look at the top leadership and what they are proposing in, in all services, you could almost say that they're doing it, and you're all could almost say that they're doing it to weaken the ability of our forces to be able to fight the Chinese. You could almost say that. Um, whether that's true, or whether whether it's true that they are on, they're all on the take with the Chinese or not. Um, they are not doing anything to improve our capabilities on the battlefield. If they're on the take by the Chinese, would it not be safe to assume that they have also allowed uh, combat units or infiltrators inside the United States intentionally? Maybe, but you know, y- again, if I'm going to if I'm going to destroy if I'm going to destroy the animal from within, I don't need to do that. I don't. I can just keep doing what I'm doing, and the 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 individuals that I'm putting in position, you know, we we'll just look at the woke crowd. Those individuals that I'm putting in those positions, they are wholeheartedly behind the the communist agenda, anyways. And so I don't I don't I don't need to fly somebody in from China and drop them into the 82nd Airborne. There are there are uh, individuals in there that that are flying that flag for them so that we don't need to do that. That's how you, you know, if you want to destroy it from within, you use common faces, meaning it's American faces that are flying the China, the, you know, the communist flag of freedom or <clears throat> democracy or whatever lie they're telling you. Um, we did a couple of things. Uh, we did a couple of things at the end of, you know, the, it probably started in the nineties. You can say it's always been there. You know, it's always been there to a certain extent, to a certain extent. But we started allowing general officers to continue their careers from behind the scenes. Meaning, whether that was, uh, you know, taking a taking a four star general and putting putting them on the board of directors of uh, of General Dynamics, or we start putting them behind. So we we we're creating these influence peddlers, right? General officers, influence peddlers, and they are. The problem with the the general staff that you have now, you know, uh, and I'm I'm talking about any colonel and above, 
not colonel. Colonel's a little bit different. Uh, but general staff officers is they are they are no longer war fighters. It's no longer about winning wars. It's about political influence and what corporation you're going to work for after it's all over. How many are there that have never even been a war fighter? Uh, a lot more than you think. Yeah. I don't, I'm not, I'm actually not concerned. I'm not very concerned about a, a four star, a four star general that has never been in the trenches. Okay. Because a four star general, the reality on that side of the, is an administrator, right? He's an administrator that creates a function within the military. So I, I kind of don't care. I don't care where his, uh, whether he's pulled the trigger or not. It's more important where his allegiance are. Is his if he's the you know if he's the fourth star in charge of the eighty second airborne, um, nothing. There should be nothing that comes between him and the eighty second airborne. It should be his allegiance should be to that flagpole, and unfortunately, the general the general officers that we have running the show right now, they have no allegiance to their flagpole. Their allegiance is to a political career, a political outcome, or a financial outcome. Right. So when you think about when you think about Afghanistan, okay, you think about Afghanistan, there is no no earthly reason why we were in Afghanistan for twenty years. We were in Afghanistan for twenty years. So a lot of people in the political world and general staff officers could pad their bank accounts. <coughs> it's like uh buying Billions of dollars of NRAP, MRAPs and then just cutting them up in Afghanistan. They don't care. They're just padding their wallets, right? We're we're already on to the next. We're already on to the next vehicle. We need a we need another vehicle, um, or I'll give you an example, another battle rifle. <clears throat> and we're gonna pad our wallets. I guarantee goddamn to you that Sig's got general officers, former general officers, and some colonels working at Sig. It's so why they're getting all the contracts. We knew a colonel that pushed a bunch of contracts for a nylon company. And when he got out, he went and worked for the nylon company. He was yeah. hired by the nylon company. That To me, that's a problem. It, it's no different than, you know, again, the minute the Marine Corps, the minute the, minute the Department of Defense said that a, a general officer in the Marine Corps could go and be a, a, general, a general officer, you know, like Secretary of Defense, okay? For the Marine Corps, that was a death nail. It was a death nail. Because for the for the since the inception of the Marine Corps, there was only two positions that everybody was fighting for. Two. Commandant of the Marine Corps, Sergeant Major of the Marine Corps. If you made it to those positions, that was it. You were a rock star. You were the rock stars. Like, you know. <coughs> that was the that was the pinnacle. Well, the Department of Defense has created this situation in the Marine Corps where that's not the pinnacle anymore. There are political positions that you can have outside of the Marine Corps that technically make you higher than the sergeant major or the commandant of the Marine Corps. So if you're a general staff officer, you can end up, you know, you can end up being uh, in charge of all armed forces in Afghanistan. Well, that means that the commandant of the Marine Corps works for you. So that's a problem. I mean, it's a problem because now you don't have guys that are putting all their effort into the Marine Corps. They're putting it into other political solutions. And so it creates it creates corruption at a level that's unbelievable. Meaning, again, guys, we were in Afghanistan for 20 years. For 15 years, we were training the Afghan army. Every general staff officer... I don't, you might go, oh God, General so-and-so was the greatest general ever. He was, he was the best. He did so much for, but every single one of them forwarded reports to the Pentagon and the White House that were lies about how well equipped the, the Afghanis were, how well trained the Afghanis were, how we're going to be able to turn this bitch over to the Afghanis. They were all lies. And when you lie at that level, you're doing it for one reason, for political gain. Is that so they didn't have to go before Congress and have a 
subcommittee interview and shit. No, no. It's because it's because we were doing favors for the White House. Whether it was a Republican or a Democrat in office, we were doing favors for the White House by sprinkling sprinkles on everything and telling everybody rainbows and sunshine. Did you ever see any Iraqi people do jumping jacks? <laughs> they, I, I, 20... Remember, we were there for you 20 know years. What I'm talking about, do you? Look it up. We were there for 20 years. I guarantee you the Iraqis still don't know how to do jumping jacks. And we spent billions and billions of dollars. There was no oversight on any of it. Why? Because, again, a general office, and when you get to the general officer, it's all about the next political position. They're not concerned about whether anything that they do was successful because there's no repercussions. Right there's no there's no repercussions. Was any the worst pullout the the worst operation we've had in the last eighty years was the pullout of Afghanistan. No one got fired for that. No one even got reprimanded. No one got a letter of caution. No one got shit, and people were killed. People were killed. U.S. military personnel died at that airfield, and no one got fired. And it was a fucking fiasco, F- a, a complete fiasco. And I know people are going to be like, oh, old core. But I guarantee goddamn to you, if a fucking MUSOC from the 90s was there, they wouldn't have been using Apache helicopters to brush people off of the airfield. That goddamn airfield would have been secured. What would they have been using? They wouldn't have been using anything. They would have used M16s and M fucking 60s and those people would have stayed off the goddamn airfield. Because the reality is if you don't if you cannot maintain control, then people are going to get killed. And that is exactly what happened. All those forces that we had at that airfield did not mean did not maintain control of that situation. They allowed it to get out of control and that's what got those Marines killed. Did anybody get fired? Nobody got fired. Anybody get a? Re- I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure the platoon sergeant, the platoon sergeant probably got a reprimand. He probably got a letter of caution. But nobody who was in charge of that fiasco got in trouble. So it's third, just they, they should fire. Him. I mean, the reality is, if I was the president of the United States right now, I would go. I would have all the force. First, I would, if I was the president, I'd be like, hey, let's get all the four stars here, and I would tell all every single four star in the army. Go to your commands, get your, stand up your command. We're going to fucking have a parade. And if, if I can't count six guys removed, meaning if you have a staff of 50 people and not a combat infantry battalion behind you, you're fucking retired. You're done. We have more generals now than we have ever had. And it has not increased our capability. Like meaning there are more four stars than we had in world war two. And it has not increased our capability or anything. If anything, it's hurting our capability because sure. Commands are reporting to commands to reporting to commands. It's just bullshit. They need to, they need to restructure all the services so that it all falls in line. Meaning, you know, a regimental commander should have a regiment behind him. A battalion commander should have a battalion command, a battalion behind him. A company com- there shouldn't be these offshoots of fucking leadership billets that don't fucking do shit. What do you think Trump will do when he gets elected? Trump's not getting elected. Who's getting elected? If they don't, if if he doesn't die, you mean you mean if they don't assassinate him? No, no. If if he doesn't die, Joe Biden will be elected president again. Got it. They'll use the same. They're going to use the same architect that they used before. You don't think they're trying to? push him out or burn him um, if, or sacrifice him. I, 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 f- I thought, you know, and people who listen to the podcast probably might remember I said this. I thought that they were setting Joe Biden up to fucking sacrifice his ass. Um, but when the democratic party came, when the democratic party came out and said, there will be no democratic debates that it, that changed everything. Because if you, if you, the reality is if you wanted to put your guy in, the debates would be the time to put your guy in. So let me throw another one at you. Something happens to him, so Kamala, Kamala. comes yeah. in. You know who comes in as her second? Well, it would have been Nancy Pelosi, but it's not going to be Nancy Pelosi because she's not Speaker of the House anymore. It would be big Mike Obama. No. Oh. Yeah. 
you know, when, if, if, when, when she they're going to run her. But she's not going to be Speaker of the House. Nope. But they're no. But election, right? Mm, I don't think I. I don't. Here's the thing. In retrospect, we can we can pretend. We can we can pretend that people were happy with the Obama administration, but in retrospect, I don't believe that even the African American community was very happy with his administration, and I don't believe that. Uh, you, you know, if they, they can... if they if if she gets, for example, if let's say let's say she gets elected, and they make you know whatever she's fucking the representative from Illinois, and then all three of those people die, it goes to the Speaker of the House. If they're going to run an election, that'll take a year. You think Biden can win an election? I don't think Biden won an election. Yeah, so again, they're going to use the same apparatus in order to keep him president. Or Okay, I take it back. I do take that back. If, if the apparatus that they're using right now to crush Trump actually works, and Trump says, and Trump is like, Fuck it. I'm not running for president. You guys do whatever the fuck you want. What just happened? They just had some. some oh, it was. It, it's. It's. So they just had some other yeah. chick show yeah. up who he says he's never even met mm-hmm. who accused him of sexual assault. Yeah. In 2016, I guess. Yes. And he's like, I've never even met this. And he person. was convicted. In, he was convicted in a court in New York City. And then somebody put a gag order. Some judge I, I, put him a gag order I, on him over something. I, I, whatever they're going to appeal it. They're going to they're going to appeal it because it's it, when <laughs> when you uh, when you get to stand trial, right? You're supposed to stand trial of jury of your peers, right? And there's no way that they pick twelve jurors in New York City who are his peers that are his peers, right? So I, they're going to appeal it. It I mean it's. Because again, everything is hearsay. There's, it's all hearsay. It was hearsay before the election. It's hearsay after the election. But suddenly they have a conviction. It's because the liberals have to have a conviction on Donald Trump. What's the it, fucking statute of limitations on that shit? I don't think there. I don't for sexual assault. I don't think there is a statute of limitations anymore. Not right. What is sexual assault? I mean, what is the accusation? Uh, I, I don't. I, I, it's it's sexual assault and he patted slander. her on the butt. I mean, he said some uh, harsh words. What it's is sexual it? Sexual assault and slander. I think he, he threw her on the ground and pulled her clothes off. I think he's. I think she's saying that he raped her in his mind. One of the fanciest. Uh, one of the fanciest. So this Bergdorf. isn't Dorf. This it's, isn't Stormy Daniels, right? This no, is no, some no. Other this woman. some other. This is some other chick that says that he raped her in a Bergdorf apartment. Uh, not apartment, but a store. Right, which is one of the fanciest ones where you don't go to a you don't go to a dressing room where there's not right. a lady standing right there, two, two ladies wanting to uh, you know help you out with your, but whatever, whatever. I'm not again. I wasn't there. I wasn't part of the jury. I don't care. This is all just some fucking democratic Got bullshit. It. So back to the Iraqis, okay? So Iraqis. We, we went over and we gave all these Iraqis who can't do PT. We gave them all guns, right? Every Iraqi for the most part had a had Look, a gun. Oh man, we gave them so many. <laughs> we we okay, gave so, our, yeah, we gave so at them, the oh. end of the day, they 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 show up and do duty or whatever. At uh-huh. the end of the day, they go home. Do they take their guns home with them? Yes. Okay. So it, well, it depends on it depends on who they are, but yes, did, uh, for the most part, they were taking their guns home. Didn't you have fucking bad guys showing up and be like, "Yo, give me that"? It it happened. So they just roll in tomorrow and they're like, "I don't have my gun." So it happened. Just, here's another one. Uh, yes. Of course. So I was listening to uh, Andy Frisella had this uh-huh. dude on, runs a, a contracting company, and he was doing a lot of uh, rescue missions, right? He was uh, he was with uh, SP Special Boat Unit, okay. right? He went from, uh, what what's the UK's Special Forces units? Uh, SAS. He went okay. from SAS to SBS, right? Okay. Um, and then did a bunch of other shit anyways. He started a contracting company. Went to Iraq and pulled a ton of people out. He evacuated the Canadian embassy single-handedly, did a bunch of shit. And he said um, it was actually the Taliban that was helping him the most get citizens yes. out. He's like, these people that you have heard such terrible things about, weren't they're, they're the most instrumental in helping us. Okay. There ha- you, have to take, you have to take all that with a grain of salt. We as in the United States, did a deal with the Taliban, meaning 
we went to the Taliban and said, hey, motherfuckers, we're going to pull out. You make sure it goes smoothly. It was within, the, you know, when you say the Taliban were, the, you know, when you say the Taliban were the, were, were, uh, were the good guys, it's, it was in their best interest to do everything they could to get us the fuck out because we were going to leave them the keys to the office. So, you know, yeah, they were the, they were the good guys at that point, but they were only the good guys at that point because they knew that we were going to leave them the keys to the office. We, we left them power. Now the dudes that, uh, the dudes that blew up the, blew up the airfield and killed the Marines, they weren't Taliban, but they're, you know, Taliban, uh, ISIS, ISIL, they're all the same fucking thing. Okay. They're all the same thing. So yeah, it, it, cause it, cause again, I will, will say ISIL or ISIS. We could have had the same meeting with ISIS and said, Hey, ISIS, if you orchestrate and allow us to evacuate our people, we will give you the keys to the castle. It would have been ISIS standing there at the Canadian embassy going, come on. Let's go because they know that as soon as you're gone, they're going to go in and get whatever was left behind. Yeah. You know, it's, they're going to get the, you know, the jewelry or whatever we left behind the billions of dollars of military equipment that we already had planned to leave behind. Okay. So back to, back to this, what's that shotgun you have? Oh, the origin 12 origin 12. Yeah. And all of those big box magazine mag fed shotguns will fit in that. Mag yes, pouch. of course. How many of those guns do you think are out there? Uh, it has to be a lot. How many mag pouches do you think we're going to sell? I don't. Probably none. <laughs> probably none. Probably none. I. I mean, I don't. I don't know. I, don't, I. There's a. There's a company. There's a company called Genesis Arms. Again, I. I got this shotgun because. It's. It's all there was at the time. Why didn't you just get it's, a Sega? Because Segas aren't that good. It's reliable, to a certain extent. Um, so that's why I got the shotgun. There is a, a shotgun that has come out post origin 12, the Genesis 12 cost seven grand. No, it's still in the, it's still three grand. Um, that is better uh, appears again, appears to be better than the origin 12. Um, and I'm because, because of how fun this, this one is to shoot. I'm already hot to find that other shotgun. Um, and I was actually thinking about, you know, once you were done with this, is contacting them and be like, hey, you should check out these mag pouches. Because the Genesis 12 is getting, uh, it's getting a lot more, it's getting a lot more heat. It's getting a lot more heat on YouTube as far as people shooting it and doing stuff with it. Why don't you buy a magazine and let's make sure it fits. It'll fit. Okay. The magazines, the, so, it, well, again, the magazine on the Genesis 12 appears to be thinner. So, so I, I thought about buying a mag, but you know, we'll, I, we'll get to that to bridge them. when we get to that bridge. Um, but yeah, just a, it's a fun shotgun. Now, again, it's like all, all weird stuff. Cause it, you know, again, the, I put the origin 12 is kind of like on the fringe of stuff. Uh, but LEM four is still better tactical shotgun. It's cool. Like that, uh, flare launcher that HK made. Yeah. It, it, uh, it's a neat thing, but, um, anyway, so yeah, it's kind of, it's kind of a fringe, it's kind of a fringe thing. Takes up too much room on your Galatech wall. It's super fun. Well, yeah. again, the, the problem with a, the problem with a shotgun like this versus let's say the Benelli M4. Where is it? In it's the in truck? the truck. Yeah. It's in the, truck. The, the problem with a shotgun like, like the origin 12 is, um, like the Benelli M4, you know, you know, you're like. I got eight rounds. Right. You you know you got eight rounds, and so you're like, okay, boom, boom, boom. Like you're 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 methodically shooting at the targets that you want to shoot because you know in a very short period of time you're going to be flipping it over and going clunk clunk clunk. You got to reload that motherfucker. So you're a little more methodic. With the origin, the pro- <laughs> the problem with the origin is it's so quick to reload that you tend to shoot the motherfucker like it's a machine gun. Not, not that it shoots that fast, but it's, it's more fun to shoot it like this. Boom, 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 boom. Than it is to go boom, boom, 
boom. So you you because you have the capability of just immediately putting another mag in there, you know, hitting the bolt release and going back to town. You know, I when I got it when I got it back, when I got it back, I went home. I have I had some shitty, I had some real shitty uh, low velocity Walmart ammunition. Sorry, Walmart. I know that, it's, it's nice that you have that ammo, though. So the difference is low brass, high brass, high low, brass as always, or no? No, low, low it's it's uh, Walmart is it's low brass, low velocity, right? So I think it's eleven forty five, maybe, maybe close to twelve hundred feet per second. So very low velocity. What's the difference between low brass and high brass? I mean, I know what it looks like, but is just there more. Any... Just you, usually, you know, when you're talking about high brass, you're talking more powder, more velocity, uh, and. Uh, and so I, you know, I spent the I spent the six seconds I needed to do to tune the tune the gas system so it would shoot that shit, and man, I in I don't know four minutes, two hundred and fifty rounds on the <laughs> oh, ground, shit. just because it was it's just so fun. Even even when you know you got I was, that many mags for that. Thing? I was uh, well, I, I got a couple. You know, did Gina shoot it? No, no, nobody nobody else has shot it. <laughs> Why? <laughs> because. It, I don't know because it's my shotgun. Gun gunsman gonna shoot it? Uh, he probably will. Did you get a tattoo yet? Says gunsman. Where would you put it on your cheek? You don't have anywhere left to put tattoos on your lip. Underneath the mustache, that'd be good. What's that? What's that kid's name? Little Pain. Little Xanax. What's his name? Little Xan. Yeah, didn't he die? Is he is he a rapper or is he just like the Island Boys? He just says a couple of words. I think so. Where'd the Island Boys come from? The islands. Florida. Are you familiar with the island boys? I am familiar with the island boys. I'm familiar with them. You, island boys. Yeah, you are you familiar with the fact that they're freaking out because they don't have any money? I don't think they ever had any money. <laughs> oh shit! There's a big. I think they're going to turn into to hardcore Christians because because their manager is just ruined. They're going to open a church. Maybe. I think they're going to turn into uh, gay male prostitutes. What? Uh, why their manager robbed them? I I just think that. They, they, I think their manager hyped them up where they believed that they had more than they really had and Got all it. that shit. And then come to find out, what do you mean the cars are rented? What do you mean the Got house it. is rented? What do you mean this necklace doesn't belong to me? All right, are you ready to uh, call it? Well, I mean, we can keep going. I mean, it's up to you. Is there any more Patreon? Is that was that no? The there's one? two Patreons right now. Mm. There was only two, um, but I figured we'd go and we shoot. could go play with some other stuff. Go some start other shooting your video. It yeah. is kind of late. There's Carnesada in there. Yeah, I'm, well, that's where I'm going. No, oh, okay. John's going to go get Carney Sauna. Take the dog out first so I can drive the truck back there. I'll take the dog out first. Yeah, take that. I think you can do it. No, I'm not touching that thing. No. He didn't even try to eat you last time. Yeah, but I think that's just because you had him on a tight choke. You had a I tight don't think choke. you can choke that dog. I can't even I can't even put that dog in a headlock. <laughs> I, think you, I think you just had him on a it's tight next, choke. It's next too big. All right, guys, we will see you next week.